it, it was uh, determined by my uh, producer, V Sharp. He said, it's free flow, berserko flow. It's everywhere. It's crazy, blah, blah, blah. And with these guys called strangegibberish.net, strangegibberish records. Not strange records. But yeah, yeah. But I, go, I listen to everybody's shit, especially the ones that I love. I listen to the mooch, but then I don't want to, like, <laughs> I don't want to. Absorb too much of it. Yeah, yeah. And then I don't want to question myself because I'm really particular sure. and I'm competitive. Whatever we want to do. If we want to, if you, right, Alex, right now you said, who could pee in a cup more? I'm going to try to pee three <laughs> liters. <laughs> And beat you in that piss test. Yeah. You know All saying? right, Luke. That's how competitive Luke I am. Cage. <laughs> I'm, I'm 50. I'm not joining in any piss club. I, I can't. Hey, yo, I'm going to yeah. be dehydrated like a motherfucker. I might die pissing three liters. <laughs> yeah. You are now listening to the Abyss Podcast with Paul the White Monk, Primo yeah. Jab, and Luke Cage. Hip hop on a higher form. Going further down pause, further down pause, further down pause. Tap in. Well, boom. Uh, episode 76 of the Abyss Podcast. Real quick, they just came in. I got this pretty dope spiffy hat from my homie, Bless Picasso. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh nice. Got me on it. Yeah, Bless, Bless Picasso. The CDs came in. Looks wonderful. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? grimy. Uh, CD, yeah, yeah, grimy on the joint. Yeah. The tape came in. You know what I'm saying? Hello, oh, oh, wait, my bad. Hello, hot Hello, water. Hot water. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what I'm saying? Boom, it came in. But most importantly, the vinyl came in too. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and it came oh, out, and it came out beautiful. So maybe we can get Alex yeah. to get this on the on the uh, the mag- magazine too. We got the hell side. Clear vinyl. Okay. Yeah. Or high water side. You know what I'm saying? Word. Hello, ho- hello, oh. high water, yo. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a pretty, it's pretty, pretty awesome, man. And I love the way Bless flows. Ever since I heard him on Prey, uh, that was a pretty, yeah, a dope a- track. awesome, yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? Scary hour, man. It came out wonderful, came out beautiful. He sent it to me on the strength, and this is a new era hat right here, by the way. Mm. It's about fifty. High you know what quality, yo. Yeah, so boom, he, he laced me. He laced me. He laced me, man. So big up to Bless. You know what I'm saying? Word, word, for sending out the merch. And uh, yeah, it's it's dope. You know what I'm saying? I put it on the, in the record already in the, uh, in the on the uh, on the spinner. We rocking and rolling. Episode seventy six of the Abyss Podcast. We here, Carl. How are you? Man, I'm doing great. I see you got the Canadian jersey on. Uh, That's cause, right. Because Alex is here. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. I mean, it's it's a special guest as far as I'm concerned. So yeah, so I, I wanted to definitely pander a little bit. <laughs> well, 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 like boom, you be out there with a uh, serene, cerebr- serene, cerebral. And Mav on the ice. Word. Supreme cerebral. They said Supreme. My bad. My bad, yo. My bad, man. I'm nervous. Not really. Anyway, but my fucking <laughs> up. So, yo, but on the real, on the real, can you imagine Mav who was like six one, six two on skates, then six five S S yeah, S C on the fucking skates. And Carl, that's a big defensive line. That's a nice that's a nice uh lineup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice little crazy, yo. rotation right there. Yep, it is. It is. Primo Jab, what kind of shirt you got on, bro? Oh man, I got this uh, Chalino shirt that I got from my man A. A. Rashid. That's Salute to him. Shout out Chalino for those of y'all that know. You know he he an official person in the world. That's what's up, man. And we nice. do have a very special guest in the building. You know what I'm saying we have a hip hop journalist from yes. Canada. You know what I'm saying boom. We have Alex Kuchma. Did I pronounce it right? You sure did. You sure did. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I'm not Ukrainian. I don't know how to speak Ukrainian, but uh, <laughs> that's how I pronounce it. So I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, that works. Wait, wait, wait. No, that's no. what's up, man. How are you doing, my dude? How are you? Man, I'm fantastic here. And uh, yeah, first off, thanks so much for having me on. I appreciate you guys. I love the podcast. I love the art that you guys end up producing. And uh, this, uh, this is a good luck. Thank you. So indeed, Definitely. you have a hell of a collection back there of music. <laughs> mm. This is the uh, yeah. this is the Canadian hip hop stuff. Uh, well, CDs wow. anyhow, and then I got tapes at the bottom. But uh, records are back home, and everything else is back home. Uh, I'm in Toronto for a couple years for for grad school. So that's what's up, man. Yeah. And all all that's all that's Canadian music. That's all Canadian, all Canadian hip hop. Yeah, just Canadian hip hop. Yeah, Canadian Canadian hip hop. Yeah, it's wow, uh, because Canadians yeah, do produce other forms of, of music as well, <laughs> other genres. They should do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But to uh, indeed, to indeed, uh, a Canadian lot of rap us aren't really huge. Here. It's we uh, didn't know. Crazy. We didn't. 
we didn't know. Okay, the first of all, a lot of us nah, are first we experience didn't know. Kid. No, 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 no. Check it out. We I did not known. know. I yes, did not did. really know. No, I didn't. I, until, until who? Who was Anderson. the? Who was the first? No, not at all. Way before that. Cardinal before official. Cardinal official. That's definitely uh, Eddie Gordo chaos, and Kenner. Uh, chaos. De- oh, you're Mocha a superstar. Only, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, all of those type of dudes. I definitely knew and, that people was up in Canada getting busy. busy. Uh, I, Battle I didn't Axe, know. All of them. I, I didn't. Dudes, yeah. You know, that, that was. Dead Socks. Yeah, man. All that. All, all, all that. But stuff, I, yeah. I didn't. Yeah, he is amazing, man. Ghetto Socks to me was like, holy shit. Somebody. He understands me. That's what I when I first heard his music. I was like, <laughs> I was like yeah, me and him should be friends. That's when I first heard Ghetto get, get Socks. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, but I did not really know the hip hop scene was this grand up there until a cardinal official opened up that gate you know what i'm saying where we're where. yeah it's uh it's insane <clears throat> well i'm sure we'll end up getting into different kind of things with what i'm doing in terms of the canadian rap scene but mm-hmm. i i had like a kind of a surface level understanding of what the scene was prior to me going they, i started this book on canadian rap music and we'll talk about that but that was in 2018 and prior mm-hmm. to then i really didn't understand the magnitude of the scene here and i lived here and i was a i was a hip-hop head i was covering hip-hop i was doing interviews for years um i was a fan of rap music and i was that was my life i was immersing myself into it but uh even then, I knew like the names that we we've already mentioned here. So like Battle Axe and Shad and Chaos and Shad, Colonel Official yeah. Maestro, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and a little bit of the battle scene, a little bit of what Han Solo Records was doing, and then cats like Ghetto Socks mm-hmm. and stuff. What it came from that, um, a little bit of Peanuts and Core, and just these little kind of random um, random pockets here and there. But as you start diving into it, it's it's huge. It's expansive. It's uh, Every every little scene, well, not there's a there's a lot of different scenes within the country, and they all have like really really rich discographies of music. Uh, Michael McGuire he wrote a master's thesis on the history of Halifax hip hop, and wow. in the in the uh, thesis um, he uh, did like a Halifax family tree, and then as an extension of that, he ended up making a discography of Maritimes rap releases. And this was albums that came out in the Maritimes, hip hop wise, and he had over a thousand albums. Uh, what by rappers wow. just out of the Maritimes, which is like Halifax, uh, Newfoundland, PEI kind of thing. New Brunswick, um, all that type stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. It's a lot of so just like, um, yeah, fascinating, uh, <laughs> fascinating like landscape of music. You know, part of it, though, it shouldn't be surprising because even in the early onset of hip hop, when it was 100 percent formed in in New York, it was not long before California and other areas of this country were adapting hip hop into different musical styles. And, and, you know, where where you had a lot more. um kind of west coast was a lot more funk and disco influenced in in the onset mm-hmm. of their hip hop they were still taking those elements sure. from that new york hip hop and kind of spinning it their own way canada especially toronto being such a huge hub and being so close to new city. york yeah. everything <laughs> that happens in new york yeah. happens very quickly in in toronto fashion music food all of it so, you know, even in the, the early, early stages of, of hip hop, when you're talking late 70s, early 80s, you know, people are traveling, people are talking. And, and that's why, you know, you find dope artists in the UK and you find dope artists in Germany and France and, mm-hmm. you know, all over the world. Because, I mean, you know, it, it spreads so quickly when you have something that's so rooted in something so honest. And, and that's what hip hop was. Yeah. But, but. Um, yeah, yeah. Carl, good um, answer, sometimes Carl. it's a great, great answer, answer, but Carl, sometimes I have dumb American syndrome. Dumb Americans, we think that the world revolves around America. We no, I get it. I American get it. football is the is the is the most popular sport in the world. It's but we not. don't we don't sometimes look out our window. We just or go outside. We just stay inside our house and we don't. Re- so of course, other countries and other places have great music. I listen to. Czech hip hop, German hip hop. I don't know what the fuck they saying. I just know they got cuts, and it, it, it sounded great. So it, yeah. whenever uh, I know you came into hip hop in 2011, 2011 is a weird time because that's when I think hip hop was getting better. 
Mossberg dropped in 2010 in the summer. Then all of a sudden, 2011, boom! One of my favorite albums of all time dropped. Triple X by Danny Brown. You know by Danny Brown, yeah. Same, same year, uh, ASAP Rocky dropped that same year. What else? Uh, Kendrick dropped that year. Uh, I don't know. I think Eminem voiced the 5 9 to the Roots. A lot of good yeah, music came out, album album came out that yep. year. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So a lot. Too, that was when I think the climb of what we are right now. I think Action Bronson came out with Hannibal Lecter. That was earlier yeah. than that. That was 2010. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Yeah, but that's when it was climbing up. So that's a really good year to catch catch on Albert to. Albert uh, Einstein, yeah. though. That was I Albert mean, Einstein. Oh, there yeah, you go. Prodigy, yeah. Yeah. Albert Einstein was that was that to flew me, under the radar was, though. When that dropped, permanently was, slept uh, on. Yeah, because it was like, oh, yeah. Prodigy put out an album with this guy, The Alchemist. Man. Oh, mm. nah, man, man, that, I, I love that shit. Was boy, amazing, instant classic. I think for people me. dug. Mm -hmm. I th I think people dug the Alchemist idea. It was just it felt like Prodigy had right. lost steam at that point. Right. Um, it didn't I take it until later where people were able to go back and like. I love mm -hmm. that album and I love all of Prodigy's later material, but absolutely, uh, it felt like the scene had given up on him during that yes. era yes yeah i thought he was holding it down i really thought in my mind because i'm oblivious to stuff alex primo jab carl i'm oblivious i'm in my own <laughs> little world so like I, I just be like yo i love it you don't gotta like it i'm i'm, I'm i thought he was holding he was my champ sean price is my champ i didn't give a fuck if anybody yep. listened to it or not sean price, sean price absolutely was big that, so, yeah. sean price was going to crazy in that era yeah absolutely and it's an army of Currency. the pharaohs and that kind of shit too yep. yeah non-fiction mm -hmm. the underground you know too. all of them dudes was oh, yeah, out fiction holding yeah, shit down they got right there yeah, yeah it was i thought like, i wanted to be their friends too that's what i i think <laughs> i was saying crazy. that uh previously man like that era we talk about it like it was a, a dark ages, right? But there was still a lot of quality shit that was coming out during that time uh, that I feel like it, it didn't really fly under the radar. I feel like the heads that were starving for things were finding good shit that was coming out. Definitely the the goalposts, the people that were holding it down the most, you definitely got to say Sean Price. Uh, you get You got to say prodigy the late prodigy era because it started with that uh the mac is back album with Al alchemist and then they did return that uh albert yeah return to mac thank you with alchemist and then they did that uh that whole album the albert einstein because then that turned into <laughs> hnic two three and all the rest of them that came out after that but then you hit like you said action bronson uh currency uh these were mm -hmm. names of people that were putting out dope hip hop projects during that time when when people like Nas were screaming that hip hop was dead. You know, yeah, fuck you that. Know? I didn't, we didn't I didn't believe it. Yeah. We didn't, I, didn't really, it. I didn't realize this really until Alex and I were talking just before the podcast. But there's a large portion of us that growing up with hip hop, you know, I was born in seventy three, um we didn't have to look for it. I didn't have yeah. to dig. We had so much out in the open in front of us in so many different styles. And as I was saying, you know, you'd go from Leaders of the New School and Tribe Called Quest yeah. all the way to NWA, all the way to Two Live Crew. You know, all of this was out. It was there. You didn't have to, like, look for it. So, diggers were still rewarded, right? There was still, yes. yeah. there well, was still and, like, obscure music that you... I, the treasure hunt was filled with treasure, right? If you actually went on <laughs> yeah. that hunt. But yeah, I think there yeah. were some of us that that were were lazy, perfect, perfect. like myself. That when when the mainstream started to shift into mumble rap and and just some of the other stuff that you know I just wasn't looking for, um, and and what I was listening to took a backseat and wasn't really readily available. I I wasn't in the condition mode to to search for it. Now, you know, sure. also I've, I've said that, you know, I started playing drums. I jumped into heavy metal. I started kind of going down a heavy metal rabbit hole. And, and that would really kind of keep me from digging into a lot of that. Fortunately, a friend of mine, you know, introduced me to Doom and then I met Lukey and the rest is history. But, Ooh. you know, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't used to having to search for it. It was, it was always there. So when the mainstream stuff just started to suck, I just kind of tuned out. So indeed, I think a sure. lot of us did. Oh uh, yeah, I got the weird shit. Triple 2011 Triple X, 
and Goblin, Tyler Crater. That, that, that was all me. But let's take it back to Genesis to people that aren't familiar with you. <coughs> Alex is a hip hop journalist. S say where you're from and give me your story of how you got into this culture until the present time now. If we can, like, we'll dissect it and jump in. Sure. Where you're from? <coughs> Canada. Yeah, I'm from I'm from Canada. Hip hop I've learned, learner. Uh, first of all, give learner. him the correct. Yeah, give him the correct title, man. Because I oh, mean, oh, he's is, is, is he's beyond learner a journalist. Like, yeah, yeah, is hip hop learner kind of like Padawan learner? Because you know, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I um, I think the title accurately describes what mm. I do. Um, that's uh, I I can't necessarily call myself a journalist because I feel like I do different things other than journalism. Um, so do. And I can't quite call myself an academic because I don't have a PhD yet, and I I do other stuff other than academia. Um, but my mm. passion is is hip hop, and I, I consider myself a hip hop head. Um, probably that's a more appropriate title. But I'm a hip hop mm. head with a passion for learning about it. Um, and mm. that means reading about it, but it means it's good. like exploring, um, exploring the inner kind of crevices of the culture, trying to get as much out of it as possible, oh. keeping up with what's currently going on. Um, and yeah, and just um, it, learning about it, right? Um, so it and is. that means if I have to, if I have to do primary source research, I'll do so, do interviews, that kind of thing, um, and try to share the knowledge that I acquire because I. Um, I think I think anyone that has like a real passion or interest wants to share that passion you're or right. interest. Definitely, uh, definitely. And when you feel like you're doing a better job than other people at like exploring and finding all these cool things that other people are mm -hmm. not aware of, then there's even a stronger sense of I need to share this. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm from Canada. I was born in uh, Fort Francis, Ontario, so right at the International Falls by Minnesota. Um, but I, I've lived all over. I grew up in Arroyo, Ontario. Um, I lived in Nova Scotia for about 10 years Nova or so. Scotia, yeah. Um, that's my like primary residence. I'm, I'm in Nova Scotia, but right now I'm in uh, Toronto for grad school. Um, I'm in Toronto now. I lived in BC for a little while, but all in Canada anyhow. So yeah, I'm, I'm Canadian and, uh, how I got into things. So, yeah, um, yeah. I was born in 93. So I was, uh, six Power years old and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, yeah, yeah. I, I was six years old uh, in 99, and that was probably my first like hip-hop memory. Uh, I have a sister that's 10 years older than me, and she she wasn't a hip-hop head by any means, but she was a music fan, and she liked like a lot of like grunge and silver chair and Bush and Our Lady Peace and shit that was coming out in that kind of era in terms of that music. But um, she had CD binders and she liked pop music as well. So she had a lot of other mm. kind of shit. And um, because uh -oh. she was a music fan, we play like music related games, quizzes, that kind of thing. She's 10 years older than me. So she played games to entertain her little brother. And um, mm. I remember her showing me the Slim Shady LP. Um, she uh, would have got it when it first came out because she was pretty active in, in getting shit. And mm. at that point, I think my interest, I'm a, I'm a child. I think that... My interest at that point was very much music as a novelty, things that are funny, quirky, that kind of thing I gravitated yeah. towards. And there was something with, with M that certainly did that for me. It captured that kind of- He was entertaining. Life. Yeah, he was entertaining. Um, and it was one of those things where she was like, don't let mom listen there. Don't let mom know that you're <laughs> listening to this. But, uh, Real but like, here's the CD. But here's the CD. And I- uh, I really fucked with it. It just, it, it really changed what my thought of music was. It went from being a novelty to being something that, something that could kind of speak to the soul to some degree. Um, it was, it, it, music now was able to be relatable um, rather than just a novelty or a joke. Um, and it was a transition of what I think the art form presented itself for me as. Um, Quickly from there, I started skateboarding. Um, I started skateboarding when I was like eight mm. years old um, and I would go mm. to the skateboard park and me and my friends kind of, I don't know, my friend circle became the skateboard kind of culture in my local uh, hometown. And that's how it works. Uh, yeah. We'd, uh, we try to get our hands on any sort of like a VHS tape or uh, early kind of DVDs that would have uh, 
uh, skateboard videos on it essentially so like blind videos or plan uh, plan b videos that kind of plan thing b, yep, uh, and a lot of that, those yeah. yeah so a lot of those early skateboard videos and i'm sure they still exist now uh you mm-hmm. know they still operate oh, in the same oh. way but uh i, I still have one of my boards played. right there yeah so rap music <laughs> was just heavily played in those videos um and like i remember like plan b's virtual reality tape had like casual and hieroglyphics and yep. it Ooh. was that was the type of music that they were playing so I, I got more into rap music as my life progressed. Um, and by high school, I was, um, I was just kind of a nerdy kind of, uh, I don't know, like a isolated kid kind of stuck to it, like kind of a loner kid, but I was always known as the person that skateboarded and listened to rap music. Um, and those two kind of identities, I think, uh, cemented themselves pretty strongly at that period of time, but Really, and you mentioned 2011 earlier, um, 2011 was important because it was it was when I started the Underground Vault. Um, so I was still in high yeah. school at that point. So I'm a child, I'm a kid, um, I'm a teenager, and, and I decide that I, I've i kind of run into some walls where I start I start digging. So I've, I've been digging for quite some time, and there's, there's a sense that the, uh, the artists that I'm into are not being covered. So if I want to look at any sort of hip hop media, they are, they're operating at a very kind of surface level. There's no podcast like what you guys are doing at that period of time. This is 2011. Right. The only kind of YouTube um, markets that are around, like Anthony Fantano is not a hip hop cover. Like, he doesn't do hip hop stuff. He's like a rock cover. He does mm-hmm. rock music. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's not very big at that time. There's Misanthropic One on YouTube that does uh, stuff, and then there's a few bloggers. Werner uh, Werner Vaughn Whalen Road. He uh, he like owned the fucking game in terms of blogosphere, like rap music documentation. Um, Hip hop bootleggers was really big. Um, there was there was blogs that would cover um, obscure rap music, but video format there really wasn't, and even the blogs felt like they weren't doing as good of a job as they could have. Um, and I was getting to the point where I was listening to the music, but I had no one to talk to about it um, because mm. I couldn't, I, 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 there was no, there was no outlet for me to do so with. Right. Um, and I started the underground vault then. Um, and those videos are, are pretty cringeworthy and, and hard to look at now, but uh, <laughs> I was, I was a kid and I was, I, I was reviewing rap music. That was essentially the thing. Um, so I was uh, reviewing shit from like Necro or like uh, mm. uh, uh, nonfiction and Army of the Pharaohs and all the kind of splinter groups that would go off of that. So cats like Dope Nixon and Blackistan and uh, anything that I could find that was kind of hardcore aggressive underground. Immortal music. technique. Um, Immortal technique certainly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. At that period of time. Yeah, that's all in uh, that world. Yeah. So. There was there was a lot of kind of obscure rap music that I started to kind of fucking with, and eventually that turned into doing interviews. Uh, so I started doing interviews in 2013, um, and that I, I feel like I felt um, I felt like that was more important than everything else that I was doing prior. It felt like I was producing actual knowledge that like historians could look back at and gain um, yes. gain from. Yes. Um, whereas otherwise, like my opinion on music didn't matter, but nope. I could, I had the agency as a human being that I could produce knowledge of a hip hop variety that was actually like valuable to the culture. The culture, I could, I could contribute something to the culture by doing interviews with artists. Um, mm-hmm. And it very quickly meant that that was my focus. Um, so I started doing that. I was writing for different magazines and stuff at that period of time as well. Um, Eventually, I went back to school to do uh, to do a degree, and eventually, my goal is to get a PhD, and that was the goal right from the very beginning. But um, mm. I enrolled at uh, Cape Breton University in the history department, and started immediately working on a Canadian hip hop history project um, mm. and the book, and that started in 2018. Um, since then, I've done radio. Um, I guess I did a little bit of radio prior, but um, that's. Uh, 
it wasn't anything super serious, but I did radio at uh, a college level for a while. Um, I contributed frequently to Breaking Records Radio, which is an online platform. And then I also was hired to do uh, an audio documentary series by CBC Radio in uh, right. 2019 on uh, Canadian rap music as well. So that's kind of been the the gear. And then <coughs> now I'm working. On, I'm releasing this magazine, um, and I'm still working on the book. So the book is uh, the book's a big project, and it got to the point where I I just needed to publish something. I, I need to get something out. I can't I can't just keep working in the background on this task. Um, um, it's it's driving me crazy. So I, I just needed to publish something. Well, uh, and so real quick, the magazine just, thread this year. Yeah, just for anybody here in the states that don't know who CBC is, it's the largest yeah. broadcasting company in Canada. It's Correct. it's CBS or NBC. Or, or ABC here in the United States. It is the Correct. major broadcasting company sure. in, in Canada. So Absolutely. And also to piggyback off, Carl, for those of you who may not understand uh, really what my man Alex is saying, the reason why he's sitting here with us, and it's, it's such an honor to have somebody of his stature sitting here with us, this man is somebody who is pursuing as an, ap- an academic but not only that, beyond an academic, one of us, you know, somebody who is in the culture, who is legitimizing, further legitimizing uh, the historical era that we are currently living in, that we're witnessing, <laughs> this, this this rise, this renaissance that we're a part of. He is yeah. documenting it seriously uh-huh. in, a, in a way that is being thoroughly, thank you, Carl, that is being taken seriously by... Uh, the Canadian government to the fact that mm. they gave him a you're you're a I mean correct me if I'm wrong you're a SSHC scholar correct like you you are being yeah. funded to study and produce your PhD in these hip hop hip hop studies. Yeah, so I'm not doing my PhD yet. I'm doing my my masters, but oh, excuse uh, me, I masters. am funded by oh. I I am funded by the. Uh, <laughs> By the Canadian government, yes. Right. Uh, it's the, the research, uh, I should know the acronym, but it's, it's, uh, it's SHIRK anyways. You call it- yeah, uh, I was close. You call it SHIRK. And it's uh, it, it's the largest funding agency in Canada for, for academic research, at least in the humanities. Yep. It's a humanities research board um, um, organization. So- Yeah. That, and yeah, it's- uh, It's a big deal. It's crazy. It's a fucking it's big deal, me, man. It's crazy to me that the Canadian government values something like that, um, uh. and it it shows the kind of interest in, uh, that academia has in the direction that academia has taken over the last like thirty, forty years, where mm, we've got definitely. to the point where we're we're genuinely interested in a wide variety of subjects, and it's and that should be that should be exciting for people to know because Absolutely. it means that if you it is. if you have any interest, you can pursue it in. Like as a respectable career, like mm-hmm. if you get a PhD, you're a university professor. That's a that's a pretty respectable career. But you could study anything you want within that within that domain, right? Um, I st- I study rap music in in hip hop culture, and that's my that's been my life way before I started university. Um, mm-hmm. But knowing that I get to all day, I just get to think, read, and write about rap music, and Dope. I that's that's an actual job that the government thinks is is uh, is necessary. It's useful, uh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. absolutely so, and is. I will say this about Canada: in in there's a reason that Canadians are are extremely patriotic, and and it's because in a lot of sense we do value important stuff like art and and education. So, or your people. <laughs> well, Canada. <laughs> can, well, you know, I mean, except look, for Native Americans, governments are governments, and and they're you know powerful <laughs> people are powerful people. I'm not I'm not going to say Canada is just like a, a candy First land nations. of dreams. Sorry. And, but but there's there is something to be said about a culture that celebrates education and art, and when you have a government that helps you do that, it it really does bring a lot of pride. So like. In Canada, sixty percent of the music that's played on on the radio has to be Canadian. Has to be artists. Canadian, Ooh. absolutely. I thought that was dope. I thought that was an amazing rule. That's and, so dope. And and yeah, I mean, there's outlets, especially now. You can you can get whatever music you want, but what should be promoted in your country 
should be, you know, the people that are working hard in your country, right? You should, Drake, you should have an Drake avenue for them. Drake benefited hugely from this. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's just, let's Absolutely. just make a sidebar there. Drake benefited hugely from that. There are a lot He's of artists talented, that have. But a lot, yeah, but, you know, for example, like I mm-hmm. said, Drake was basically subsidized in Canada. But but Canada yeah, does. I, I compliment as a country. That's that's something that oh, should be supported. Sh- shout out to our boy uh, Finn for he's up for a Juno Award. Yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, shout out shout year. out Finn. Wait, really? June uh, the Juno is recognized. Finn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah yeah. He's up for a Juno. Kirk, what, did he, what did he get nominated for? I want to well, say reggae, it was reggae, reggae album. Song. Yeah, yeah, the reggae yeah, album yeah. that he put out. Oh yeah, he put out that like seven inch single with the, yeah yeah the reggae yep. dude. Okay. Yep. Uh, great awesome that's uh yeah. that's the best that's, news i heard all day big thing i know ghetto socks was up for award against drake and the juno awards uh one year yeah, ghetto socks like, is yeah, is well respected like within the scene when when did uh when did you guys hear of ghetto socks when what was your introductory point into ghetto hey, socks yo, he he was on tour and i i uh typed in i think nerdcore hip-hop in some strange reason okay. they grouped him in okay, with okay. nerdcore hip-hop so then I, I he was on Vice because he's on tour. And mm. it was two days after he came to Atlanta. And I downloaded before it I I had his music because Pink Lemonade was one of my favorite songs. Because one of my favorite simply is Lemonade, Pink Lemonade. Anyway, boom. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. And it, he had cuts and he had a lot of lot of beat changes in his fucking music. It was like, yeah, it was like it was Yeah. Different but familiar, yeah. So mm. that's yeah, how I got he, it. Uh, he's a a legend in in the Canadian hip hop scene at this point. He he started as a graph writer in Ottawa. Um, he was awesome well artist. known as a as wow. like a graph writer um, under a totally different name. I forget the name now, so I can't uh, I can't uh, recall it. But uh, I'm scared anyways, of him. He was a graph writer then, and then uh, he moved to to Halifax in the the early 2000s and started like fucking with the Maple Mothership and doing like radio stuff there. And um, oh. he was a part of Alpha Flight. And then uh, Alpha, and then he Alpha got Flight burner. Yeah, then he got into Backburner around like, uh, well, he was a part of the uh, Heat Wave album. So he was certainly a part of Backburner by like 2008, 2009 and oh. uh, has been releasing music with them. And then now he's getting kind of the second wave of attention because uh, like the new record he did with DK, it seemed to yeah, the DK like, get an audience. Yeah, but it seemed to get an audience within this kind of renaissance movement was seeming to fuck with that. Uh, but he fits perfect with it. I am terrified of Ghetto Socks. Yeah, Check yeah, it out. Stoked. I have a I have a record with Ghetto Socks, and I I had, did a skit to finish it, and I haven't sent it because like I don't know. Okay, boom. I met him at he's A3C. He's the nicest dude. He's the nicest. And he's always nice. So I saw him at A3C, <laughs> and he said, "Are you Lukey Cage?" I was like, "Yeah." And he said, "I'm Ghetto Socks." I said, oh, "Are you Ghetto Socks?" <laughs> God, I and so I have a picture of him dabbing him with the biggest smile. And I met so many other people at that A3C. And like, I was just so geeked yeah. to meet that motherfucker. First of all, uh, I didn't expect him to be there because we were both watching uh, Wu-Tang and Dipset, I believe. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, right now, I, I'm kind of like got butterfly. I'm scared of ghetto socks. He has some crazy verses on this record, yo. Crazy verses, man. The joint called Milk. He has another one where he said, uh, uh, I'm low key trying to get it. Get it like a tesseract. <laughs> Carl, primo, primo, get uh-huh. I'm low key trying to get it like a tesseract. Low the key. tesseract. And low key, yeah, 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 that's dope. Yeah, I get it. Oh my god, I get it. yeah. If so I'm, I, I'm, te- I am tired. I, I'm scared. Avengers I am terrified. Of, so y'all pray for me, so I, we can finish this record, man. Cause I'd be like, <laughs> I'd be scared to hit him up on the joint. I'm like, yo, cause some people you geeked out. I would have geeked out over Tyler Quality too, being cool. But like, Man. not no more. I want to beat his ass. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Now yeah. you've been talking about the Ghetto Socks yeah. and Lukey Cage album, man. I'm I'm waiting yeah. for it, man. You know, yeah, it's, like, it's really on, good. Fester did all the beats. Fester did all the beats. So it's it's really. Oh, shout yeah, out it, Uncle yeah. Fester, yeah. my yeah, guy. Yeah, so Uncle yeah. Fester yeah. in background too, like another one that's <laughs> yes. just has such a lineage in the Canadian hip hop scene, and I'm so glad. A great that DJ and a genuinely his, good guy, just absolutely. such yeah. a nice guy, good dude. Yeah, we've had him on. He's so cool. Mm. Yeah, his last few albums yeah. that he's done with like, uh, well, with Primo Jab or with 
uh, a la Preem or John yeah. Creasy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. These records are like a, a totally new direction for what he's, what he's done in the past. Uh, he's always been like a hip hop producer and he has that sound, but it's the, it's a different audience that the rappers that he's working with now hold. Um, really, really cool to see. Yeah. Really but cool it, to see. But it's like, I'm, I'm, to me, it's like, it's some of the, I mean, I think they fit really good in with this shit. Yeah, uh, it, it uh, seems uh, like uh, it's, uh, it's what he well, does, it, you know what I mean? It doesn't seem like it's too too far outside of his because lane, especially, yo, Grim Day, Grim Night, absolutely. So he good. Snapped. Excellent, he, excellent. Yeah, he went produced. crazy. Yep. I mean, there's no there's no way around that. Um, when when hip hop was I, dead, so called dead, Festa yeah. was making them beats that was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Festa was making them beats. And Ghetto Socks fit right in with Little Brother. Uh, uh, all them shits, all that, all that, all that shit. Other names. Tanya yeah, Morgan and shit right there. Yeah. He fit, he, he fit perfectly in with all that shit. But some of that stuff was overtly hip hop with all the cutting they did and everything. Yeah, and but but low key, uh, they got he had a video with a dog and he in a pond with a uh, rowing a boat and shit. That shit would fit in with with anything. Like, yeah, yeah I mean, he really fits in well. In any lane, you know what I'm saying? So the resurgence of Ghetto Sox and Festa, yes. to me, it was always like they fit in anywhere. They multi-dimensional brothers. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, can yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the Ghetto Sox stuff, like he has <coughs> he has shit with like Elda Sensei and stuff too, and, oh, yeah. and the I returners was, yeah. and like yeah, Whoa, yeah, that's super. What's up. Definitely, man. Elda Sensei, Sensei like artifacts, yeah. Of artifacts, course. my bad. I said hieroglyphics, of my course. bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my bad. This is fucked up, man. My it's bad. All right. I think it, yeah. and, and I follow the brother too. Yeah, I said like Elder Sensei. Yeah, 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 one of my yeah, favorites. Yeah. One of oh my favorites. God. Absolutely. Oh, I saw, I saw him in um, rest in peace to Tame One. Sadat Sada X perform. Yeah, we saw him up at Five Two Nine. Five Two Nine. That yeah. was a great show. That was a great show. Sadat X show. and Elder Sensei together were just on. Do you guys check in with the new J Rawls and Retmatic project? Rawls, check it out. I saw it. I saw it was released. Okay. It's super dope, but uh, Sadat X and Elder Sensei have a song on it together, and it's uh, oh, it's I gotta amazing. check it out. It's uh, they got a whole album dudes, together. So, yeah, so Rhett Manic and uh, it, yeah. and J Rawls are like uh, DJ producers, but uh, so there's a mm. couple instrumental cuts off of there, but there's quite a few songs with rappers on it and two, and it's uh, yeah, stellar, stellar project. Nice. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta I gotta check it out. Check it out, check it out. Boom, it was boom. one of my most anticipated since I heard about it like a couple months ago. This is uh I've been waiting for it. And I just listened to Ooh. it. It was the last album I heard before I, I hopped on this call. Oh wow. Indeed, okay. okay. How That's many how many albums a week do you think you, you go through? Jesus. Um <laughs> probably uh well I because I imagine I a, there's a certain amount of research that you've got to do, but then you're also checking out yeah. new artists constantly, right? Yeah, so so far in 2023 for 2023 releases, like albums that were released this year, yeah. I'm at 238. 238. Wow. wow. In, in it, five weeks, yeah. four and a half weeks. Yeah, yeah, January was 31 days. That's yeah. ridiculous. A month and a couple of days. Sheesh. A month but, and two uh, days. Albums are getting shorter now, which means yeah. it's, uh, yeah. it's a lot Eight, easier. Songs. Yeah. Oh, we lost you. Um, uh -oh. When I started. There you, go. There you are. Okay, we yeah, lost yeah, you for yeah. a second. Okay. Go, go back a I little bit. Go back a little bit. Yeah, yeah, sure. I probably listen to the same amount of music now than I did in 2011 when I started this. Um, it's just albums are albums are shorter and then there's just more of them. Um, but there was a lot of music that was released in 2011. Like I was buying every, I was buying almost everything that I was listening to at that period of time. And there was years that I would buy like 300, 400 albums um, that came out. Ah. That year. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of effort, <laughs> but it was, but the albums then were longer. They were like uh, 40 minutes was like a kind of an average length for an album. But right. now it's shifted down off. to like, 15 or so 15 to 20 minutes um, 25 minutes yeah, yeah. they're eps almost. yeah eps yeah, well you have a lot that are you have a lot that are really small so like five to kind of six seven minute <coughs> and then and then you have a lot that are still like in your 30 30 minute range but i would say like on average probably about like 15 minutes i probably spend maybe six hours a day listening to new music which doesn't seem like too much i don't know like 
if if I'm going to consider this my job, that's not that <laughs> one. No. It's a right. fucking awesome job, but two, yeah, it's not yeah, even yeah. that much work. Um, oh, I get it. Yeah. Also, and it's it's versus, baffling that no one else yeah. is doing this to that degree. Um, it's there's there's hip hop fans, and I I don't blame mm-hmm. anyone because. You can't, you, you can't expect anyone to treat it like a job, right? Right. You, know, you should be able to enjoy the culture in whatever capacity you want. But mm. especially the people that claim to have authority on the, the culture. So yes. things like Hot 97 or um, big uh, radio personalities and that sort of thing that claim to have cultural authority. Right. Um, the fact that they're not even doing that six hours a day worth of digging is fucking like, it's sad. It's uh, It's really disappointing. Mm-hmm. Again, oh, Alex, it's an injustice is, to the artists that are out. It is. This is yeah, exactly yeah. the reason why I wanted to have you here because you're somebody who takes this shit seriously, and I. That's the same viewpoint that I have, man. This, I, I eat, breathe, breathe, sleep, shit. This, you know, what I mean, I, I yeah. love <laughs> this culture. I am genuinely a fan of people who are trying to put out dope shit. And I always am intrigued to find new people who are doing dope shit and and become a champion and a fan of them. I feel like it's a, a duty of mine, a mission of mine to oh, spread knowledge. Duty. And shut up! It, <laughs> uh, to spread awareness <laughs> and knowledge about what's going on. And I feel yeah. like it's it's disrespectful. For those platforms that you speak about, those we don't even have to name them, but the larger platforms, the people who have the 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 the, the backings of these corporate wow. powers and the budgets and whatever, mm-hmm. they can't even be bothered to do the research for when a Benny the Butcher comes on your show. You're like, oh, so yeah, I hear you're I hear you're kind of doing some things, or a Griselda comes on your show. You're like, oh yeah, I heard of, I, I think I've heard of you guys. That's you guys the are top this. of the top, and that's the top. Okay. You understand what I'm so, saying? It's like it's disrespectful. It's like yes. y'all, y'all ain't y'all ain't really about the culture. Y'all ain't Carl, digging Carl. in the crates. Y'all ain't digging in the dirt with us. Come on, man. You Come know on. this is this is our lifestyle. This is how I mean, we're living out know. here, man. Wait, Carl, but I man, digress, you know. man. I'm Yo, gonna take my foot guy. off them suckers Yo, next, get, man. I'm sorry. Get, get, get I'm done. This guy primo jab. Carl, I'm Carl, done. Get this I'm dude little, primo jab. Primo jab. You hip hop game is just like the nation of gods and earths. You have the 85 percent. Who are dumb, and blind? Who Absolutely. just listen to music and don't buy <clears throat> merch and don't go to shows? Say they little Wayne Correct. fans and never been to those shows. Yeah, there's a no lot CD. less than five yeah. percent of poor righteous teachers. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You where you go? Like three percent at this point. Point, point. One percenter is like hell angels, huh? Yeah, yeah, We might as well be one percenters out here. But once again, I am oblivious. I I am oblivious. So my, that's pretty good. That's pretty oblivious. Good. Like that. Oblivious. I am oblivious. <laughs> oblivious. Come on, let me get my speech impediment, dude. No, you're anyway. going to do good. We're going to help you out. Every single episode, I'm here to help you out, Luke. <laughs> Every I, single boom. time. I am oblivious. <laughs> there oblivious. You go. There to, you go. Uh, you did it. Do it for JC. <laughs> yo, anyway, boom. But yo, I don't care about what other people listen to. I just right. like our culture. Yep. I, every day we put on the radio at my job. I listen to something, or my coworker Austin is like, "Listen to this. This is good." I'm like, "Man, this is horrible, man. Like, this is Facts. not good." And then I'm like, yeah. "Whatever." But I oh, listen to it. Me. Just yeah. Word. There you go. Pause. There you go. No, no. Pause, I was what? just gonna say it's it's crazy that you just said that, fam. Like, because literally, I just had the other day one of my coworkers came up to me talking about, "Yeah, you heard about this, Coda." Code of the friend, or you heard about this, uh, this jid, and no disrespect to either of them. I was like, I'm not really into it. Uh, that. Like, I know, I know they exist. You can rap, right? You can rap, but I don't, I don't like whatever. Jid. I know, I know he exists. I'm not trying to diss them, I'm not trying to say nothing about them, but the fact that you know that surface level people that's what you know of, and that's what you come in and tell me about. And then I went down a list of names. I was like, oh, no, you know, really, I listen to Rome Streets. I listen to uh, Ma Kami. I listen to your old Ooh. Drew. I Ooh. listen to Jay Nice. I listen, to, you know, I listen to uh, Left Lane D-Don, uh, YL and Starker. You know, I listen Never to fucking Stars Coleman. I'm saying all <laughs> these names. And they and they got, I can see, the, I can see the, yeah. the, the, the blank in their eyes. 
and they, I'm, and they're like, oh, well, you know, I'm really into hip hop, but and that's what they told me about. I'm like, I get it, but that's not what I'm really into, fam. Like, I, I you this know, I'm, I'm on a different, I'm in a different place in this culture, man. Like, the stuff yeah. that you're talking about sometimes is like, feel well, like that's like, yeah. that's not it. Yeah, you, you can know refer I mean? to it as like underground rap, but there's something, there's something that even more rap, important yeah. that I think most people don't understand the distinction of, which is whether or not something is like culturally authentic. Um, and a lot of people will end up recommending things or categorizing hip hop without the conception at all built in of the culture. So it rap music is a style and they don't really understand yeah. the distinction between it. Yeah. Now yeah. somebody that is a fan of hip hop culture, that is genuinely a fan, like, yeah, like the people here, it's not very difficult to develop an ear for what is culturally authentic, right? Yeah. I can place something and within three seconds, I know whether or not it's dope or not. Like it's just, Oh that's my like God, you're right. Authentic rap yeah. music. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you can instantly hear it. Mm. Um, and that's, a, you, made that you just point. have to develop glad, an ear yeah. for it. It's kind of ineffable. Absolutely. You can't really describe where the borders are, but you can develop an ear for it. And um, it's very clear that a lot of people have the ear, but uh, it's um, it, it's a cultural statement. It's not even a, a whack or dope statement in the traditional nope. sense. It's not a quality statement, but it's nope. a cultural statement. Yeah. Um, Thank uh, you, sir. Also, one thing, thing I get validation. into, Alex, is um, the th whole three seconds you think you know what it is or what it's not is. Uh, I'm realizing by the rapper's First bar or two bars, whether I think the song is going to be dope or they're dope on how they come in. Yeah, it's song. way earlier than that. Like when I sample music, so I down, uh, like I, I got a lot of music today to listen to that I added to the list, um, like new releases. Um, I probably um, added another like 20 albums or something to listen to. Now, I was going through Bandcamp. I was going through the um, the new releases of rap music on Bandcamp. It's just one of the spots that I follow because it's it's nice and easy. It's it's legible, and uh, there must have been forty pages of new releases to get that twenty. Wow! Um, like and so that's probably I don't know maybe five hundred releases that came out in the last like thirty hours or so on Bandcamp. Sheesh, God but they're dang. all but they're oh, all God, they're damn. all bullshit. They're they're right, kids a bunch rap of crap music. in there. It's yeah. just. It's like, it's, yeah, it's just skip, 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 <clears> skip. <throat> and you can tell, most, some of the time you don't even have to end up listening to the album. You just look at the album art, right? Or look at the uh, the artist's name, right? A lot of these things can just give it away. Mm -hmm. um, there are lots of visual cues and uh, oh. literary cues and musical cues that you can use in order to determine whether or not something is culturally authentic. But people that are in tune with what's going on is... It, it comes second nature, right? You go through a record store and you just flip, 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 flip. Uh, you know exactly when you find that rap album. It like it, you, you're at a record store. You can't even listen to the music, but you know exactly mm -hmm. where it is, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, true so indeed. Yeah, I was looking. I was wow. looking for um, an artist, like you said, uh, kids rapping and shit. I found a guy. I was listening to like a Makami uh, mix on Spotify. They threw this kid named Miles Roulette, I believe, on there, and he was horrible. I was like, why is this? Why is this on there? I was trying to yeah. pull it up, pull it up right now. But yeah, it's it, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, I didn't was unaware that there was that much music to come out. It was all rap music as well. So much. Yeah. On, so this is under the hip hop category on Bandcamp. Yeah. Get the fuck yeah, out of here. There's Don't probably even dig yeah, in the like three hundred or so. It's the same thing, something. but times thirty. Yeah. But um, mm. yeah, it's it's mostly bullshit. But it, it doesn't take much time to sample through, and it's it's way less than two bars. It's uh, fast forward to a random moment in a song, and within a, almost a split second, you dismiss it or not. Um, yeah, sounds accurate. It's, uh, but you you still can. Therefore, you can just uh, weed out the what I would refer to. I really think the terms they call uh, dope and whack. Are those cultural statements? I don't really think they mean a quantity, th uh, quality thing. Um, I think <laughs> yeah. it's I think it's evident when you look at someone like 
uh, look at someone that clearly is like uh, culturally authentic. So like Rakim, for instance, if Rakim mm. released something where like mm. some of his bars were uh, just a, I don't know, maybe his bars were like uh, kind of D tier rather than the normal A tier. You wouldn't say that's a whack Go song. Away. It's still, it's dope. It's uh, you can't, you can't say that he's whack because it's culturally authentic. Um, whereas like Vanilla Ice, for instance, you say that <clears> shit is whack because it's, it's, it's outside of the culture. It's like, uh, it's almost cultural appropriation. It's grafted. Um, it's grafted. Back to our 5% terminologies. You know what I mean? It, it's grafted sure. cool versus, uh, versus true and living, uh, science. You know what I mean? That's, that's what we're talking about. For yeah. example, I mean, in this last week, um, Edo and Future Wave came out oh, with that so dead good. poetry. So good. You know what I mean? That thing instantly, yeah. as soon as you heard it, it was dope. Yeah. It insane. was dope as shit. And the artwork is insane. And the artwork is yeah. wild. It's crazy. And it's, oh, it's simple. Beautiful. But it's it yeah, exactly. It's it's uh, it, it is beautiful. It's, yeah, it really was. It's it beautiful. It's beautiful. Oh shout out I gotta shout out another thing that came out this week. This organized crime. I don't know if y'all are up on it. Organized mm. crime there's this group from uh LA uh queso um shoot it's two other dudes in the group too but organized crime man that's them dudes be going crazy they're they're these three mexican dudes from la southeast la if you haven't heard their new album no no not at all no no they don't they're not cypress they're not cypress hill at all no they they are spitting it's one of those back to what you were saying before alex it's one of those things when you hear it they have several yep. albums out, but when you hear it, the first three seconds in, you're like, "Oh yeah, this this is what I and yeah, this is what I want to hear," yeah. and that's even before they rap. And then they start rapping, and you're like, "Oh yeah, yeah, this is this is it. This is what I want to hear." Not uh, not a thing. Queso, and then they just added this new dude into the the group. His name is like Lin E. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, check it out nice. if you're not familiar. Organized yeah. crime. They dope. Right. They super dope. And they they are dope. Like I said, they're one of those things that you just happen to discover and be like, oh damn. Oh, I like this. Why aren't they on? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, be, before we move on, I was gonna go back and uh sh- big up to uh Jay Petta from My Force NYC. Uh yep. he went to the Starker and YL show. Starker and YL sound just as good in person. As they do, of course. I uh, told you. On the thing. I told yeah. you. I, I told I saw you. That. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But I seen, I, I seen I him did. already. I seen him. Jay, I hosted the supply of man. Yeah. Jay actually yeah, sent me a text before the show, mm. Mm. and uh, I was like, "Oh, homie, you got to get us some video. I, I want you to mm. do like a piece or something." Please. Speaking of which, if I can interrupt real quick, Primo <laughs> Jab and I were talking earlier, and there might be a potential that we could get like maybe a regular Alex. Yeah, Alex segment. On the show, yeah, yeah, we that'd be yeah, we crazy love that. We'd love to have you uh, maybe donate a, a quick little release of the week since you're already doing the studies anyway. You're doing the science. Maybe you donate a little video that we can put in to the episode every week, just as saying, "Hey, this I is would what love came that." Out. And you could just 100%. give us. I'm, d- I'm totally down. I um, yeah, I'm I'm already doing this this anyways, and I want to I want to share what I listen to. It's always been my thing, right? Um. I just want to, yeah, I want to spread the word on what I listen to. And I think I have, uh, I think I have less judgment than a lot of other people that talk about rap music and and cover rap music. You definitely do. You're agnostic. Um, You're very agnostic. Yeah. Like a lot of people seem to, a lot of people seem to reserve their attention towards what they're familiar with. Um, And they're very closed off to new voices. And I think yeah, that probably goes right. back to a lot of the other problems that we're already talking about. But if you look at like the the week to week release schedule, we probably get uh, per week. Let's say we get um, let's say we get like sixty albums that come out that are like Jesus. solid dope uh, <laughs> projects. Um, people <laughs> will only ever walk away from that week like with the Sky Zoo joint or with the exactly. Odyssey joint or the Ito and Future Wave joint because they are the names that are like allowed exactly. to be recognized as amazing. Shout but out that Sky the, Zoo joint because it is dope. It definitely oh, is super dope. dope. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's amazing. And th- those albums are all great and they're being recognized because they're great. But at the same time, there's there's simply a lot more than that. 
Um, and it's only those albums that will seem to get heralded. Um, there's also a lot of other shit like remix albums. Um, like people have like biases towards types of projects. Um, like if you put out mm-hmm. a remix project, it's not going to get love, but sometimes like, like who fucking cares if it's a remix album? Like, yeah, I want to hear like a bunch of you of flea Lord remixes. That sounds fucking great. Um, oh yeah. Okay. People, <laughs> Say less, but people aren't going to, uh, to walk away saying like, that's one of the great projects of the year. Um, even though the music on it, was was just as good right mm-hmm. um i don't know to answer your question 100 percent, I, I i totally began i so have, i have yeah like we can volunteer. we can do alex's weekly a list or something and and just like you know you can send us a, a video and and then i can just cut it in every week into the into the podcast mm-hmm. that'd be great Sounds man good. yeah, yeah give me really the details and stuff well, afterwards but 100 percent, i'm done cool. yeah talk about it we'll talk about it more cool yes yeah, that's dope that's dope, man. Also, uh, in your in your magazine, uh, this yes. going to be published. Yeah. It's going to be available. That's why month. you bought it, Luki. Yeah, it's this month. It's February already, huh? It's God coming damn. out right now. Yeah, it's out. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's sent off to the printers, and um, I th- the date that I got for it to be arrived here, and which is when I'll sell it. I want to wait for the copies to come because I want to take photos and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. is February seventh, but. I'm in okay. Toronto, so I think it'll actually arrive a bit earlier than that because it, nice. it, it's manufactured in Toronto. Nice. Uh-huh. I'm, hoping Monday. Did the I'm hoping Monday. Craig, Craig, yeah. Craig. Dyer did the artwork. Um, Shout out Craig artwork, Dyer. He's going to do the artwork for all 12 issues this year. So he's going to do nice. all wow. 12 issues. That's dope. Yeah. Um, okay, boom. Because I got the PDF. You go and actually rate these albums with stars. Um, that's, yeah, um, go for it. A lot well, of work, anything bro. you want. Yeah, yeah. My bad, my bad, my bad. No, man, let's talk amazing. about it. Go for it. Go now go they got to check it out. Now they got to check yo, it out. Talk about it. They, they have a lot of albums in there. You know what I'm saying? A, a ton. lot. A, mm-hmm. a 623 lot. or something crazy. So if if you miss something, which I know you have, I know we have missed shit. I know uh, it's in there. Uh, I think the only person who is actually uh, on this level is our brother Sunez. Uh, he knows yeah. a lot. He's been through a He's lot. He's the only one. You know what I'm saying? That's the only two. Only two in our in our lane. Or oh, out there, period. Really. Period. Who have, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That are really and doing the knowledge, is, yeah. And Alex, the only ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the That's it. Learner, it's you man. too. So um, definitely, definitely. So uh, Yeah, so on the, the magazine, I have I have the 100. Oh, well, for the January Street issue. Street Dreams. Have, shout out Street Dreams fanzine. Episode 6 so, or issue 6 coming soon. But anyway, bro, continue, bro, bro. Alex. I'm don't, sorry. Don't. No, no, one hundred percent. I um. So for the for the first issue, there's one hundred and eighty three projects um that I've rated, um, mm. and Jeez. I also have charts at the back for my what I call the Frizen Journal. Or um, if you're not familiar with the term Frizen, it just means musical chills. Um, Ooh. when you listen to something and it puts you in that moment, it means you have to, it's a Frizen if uh if you're experiencing Frizen, right? Um, so I have the Frizen Journal at the back, which is just every song that I've kind of that gave me musical chills throughout the month um and i've highlighted the ones that i thought were extra dope so i have basically song recommendations and then the the project journal but um i think more importantly than that and i understand that those are going to be what most people fuck with and what they gravitate towards what people end up purchasing the magazine for um but i think more important than that i had interviews which are good they're conversations with hip-hop artists i also have on the back i have um kind of smaller interview segments for artists that i discovered for the first time that month um so if i fucked with a project but i never heard of them then i'll ask them a few questions just to kind of learn who they are Uh, more like uh think of uh like unsigned hype at the source so you have like a Mm. page or two that's just uh to get to know artists um but I think the, the the element that I'm most excited about is I have literature reviews in there. Um, so I do a lot of hip hop reading, which is an element that most people don't really understand exists. Um, people that are outside of academia don't really have a knowledge about what scholars do, but they just have conversations about things. And there is like every year there's like hundreds of articles written by PhDs about hip hop culture. And there's a whole world mm. outside of your Hot 97 and Power 105 and all these uh, stations and networks or the Source Magazine or Double XL that are having hip hop conversations, but just on like an academic level. Um, 
and they're fascinating. They're talking about what the culture is and the what the culture means. And they're having these theoretical conversations about hip hop culture that basically no one that's a part of hip hop culture is knowledgeable about. Um, mm. And th- I think that's an area that since I started my kind of academic journey, I guess, has been most uh, most illuminating. When I was a hip hop head. I fu- like I read everything I possibly knew about rap music. I tried to learn. I read the liner notes. I I dug. I I, I tried to do everything I could in order to learn about it. But I didn't even know that this world exists. Um, mm. And so throughout the the magazine, I'm I'm reading a lot of these articles as I normally do. Reading a lot of these books, and I'm having conversations. I'm trying to present them a little bit to the masses rather than just talking about the academic ideas and the scholarship and. I'm trying to kind of weed out what I think hip hop heads would would get would get from a piece like that. Um, so I hope that those end up being really what what becomes important in the magazine. But I fully understand that the the project list is has like a utilitarian value to it. Like there's uh, it's it serves a function for the culture in a pretty important way. I think just the the full list of albums that came out that month. <clears throat> it's interesting mm-hmm. to me that that the I guess I won't say least important, but the the part that you weren't as focused on is the interviews. When you're really great at interviewing, and, Absolutely. and you know we we do an interview podcast, and I think one of the sure. greatest things about our podcast is it's very organic and and it's not like we have this list of questions that we want to ask. We nope. just want to get to know people and so we have conversations. As I'm reading your interviews, <clears throat> I noticed very quickly that your follow-ups are conversation based. It's it's based off of maybe yep. what they had said, not necessarily, well you answered this question so now I'm going on to my completely non sequitur question of this. Because I have these sure. eight questions that yeah. I want. And a lot of times in written interviews, they have these specific questions they want to ask. So regardless of what the answer was, there's no follow-up. There's no interaction from the interviewer. And I love that about your interviewing. So, you know, I as excited as I am about going through and, and finding those five-star picks, you know, that you've got or, or the, mm-hmm. you know, the ones that gave you chills. I sure. really, you know, I really enjoy reading your interview style. So, you know, I, uh, I commend you, you for that. I've- I appreciate that. There's two things there. One, um, and yeah, thank you. That that actually means a lot to me. The I stopped doing interview questions um, a while ago, and I used to. I used to prep questions before every interview, thinking that if I didn't do it, it's like an act of laziness. It's uh, I'm not hmm. doing a good job if I don't prep questions. Um, but eventually, I, I one I ran into problems with it, and I can talk about that. But also. The reliance on that felt, um, it it didn't feel needed eventually. It felt like I could feel confident in my own knowledge about rap music. And I read an interview with, um, I think it's over there. I think it was, um, it was, it was an interview by Brian uh, Kaser. He does the Chopped Herring interview series books. Uh, he also has a book series called Words, which, uh, I should have here as well. So he does this series called Words, Brian Kaser, um, but he also ends up doing the Chopped Herring interview books, and the Chopped Herring interview books are are here. Um, nice. And mm. I read this interview, and it was, I guess it was the little prior preamble to the interview, and he said that, um, I think he was interviewing Kirk Cazal. Um, oh, wow. And okay. he was like a artist from the 80s, and, uh, mm, the, and this dude's like amazing like, historical interviews. Um, and he said that um, I wasn't I wasn't ready for the interview, and I was like at a gym or something, and I got a call from Kirk Cazal, and he said, "Are you down to do the interview now?" And he wasn't really prepared, but he said, "What kind of hip hop journalist am I if I'm not always prepared to interview Kirk Cazal?" That's right. Um, <laughs> and it kind of hit me in a way that I should probably always be prepared for that. Um, but I ran into problems with with structuring my interviews. Like the one that really stands out to me, and this is. Uh, I was I was just embarrassed. Was I, I I interviewed Homeboy Sandman back in 2014, maybe 2013. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it was right after uh, that. Uh, I don't pay attention to sports really, but that Sterling guy. Um, we can't. Uh, was Alan Sterling because he said, "Yeah, yeah." He was in the news because yeah. he said something about uh, no, 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 not uh, Alan Sterling. Black Excuse people me. to go to the NBA shows or something. 
he yeah, won, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. That was he the, didn't the want his girlfriend. It was the owner of the Clippers saying he didn't want his girlfriend hanging out with the black guys because she can do better than that, and he's he's making her look bad by being around the okay. black guys. Like, come on, what are you talking about? These are these are my playthings. You're you're better than that. They're monkeys. Exactly. Yeah. So this was right after you know, that. His name was wasn't Alan Stern. Alan Stern's a, a good person. Peace eternally to you, Alan Sterling. But anyway. Okay. Um, sorry. The, sorry. No, 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 no. So Homeboy Sandman, <laughs> just after that, put out this article. Um, I think it might have been on Noisy or Vice or something. Um, but he put out this article saying that he didn't want black people at his shows. Yeah. And if you read the article, it, there was like points, valid points. Like Homeboy Sandman's clearly not like a racist dude. But uh, he made this very controversial statement as a headline, um, and then you really had to read it in order to kind of understand where he was coming from. Um, And it was the first interview that he had done after that article had been published, and he was getting a lot of traction. And when I wrote out the questions for the interview, I wrote that as one of my questions to talk about this thing, um, which normally I don't even really do because I don't like to talk about drama and beef and all that kind of shit. And it felt like Mm -hmm. a drama Type scenario. And I had read the article, so I knew that it wasn't it, like the headline wasn't uh, as. Uh, uh, but anyway, the way I crafted the question, yeah. So, but the way I crafted the question was kind of open. It was like uh, tell, uh, like uh, clarify your statements there, kind of thing. Um, but I wrote the question, and the interview was great. Um, the interview was was amazing. We went through a lot of history. Uh, mm-hmm. We talked about like the. Uh, I don't know. We just talked about a lot of like moments about Homeboy Sandman that I really was into and I really fucked with. And I got a lot of the interview. But then at the end of the interview, um, I'm, I'm getting to the end of my questions. And there's this question about this fucking article that he wrote that is like a controversial question. And uh, it just wasn't, it didn't feel right to ask at the moment, but it was on my interview. It was on my interview list of questions, my question list. And uh, for whatever reason, I asked and it just, it like derailed the conversation at the end for no apparent reason, but it was because I was reliant on this structure that I had, mm. uh, that I committed yeah, to it was prior the to the time, interview. Yeah. And, and you um, should have gone with your gut and just said, you know what, I, I'm going to skip yeah, that question. Yeah. So there was a lot of uh, little moments like that where I felt like the the structure was actually disadvantaged. Uh, like uh, it was it was leading to negative uh, side effects and. Um, yeah, I paired with the Brian Kaser quote. Eventually, I just stopped doing interview questions. And it became, when I started doing my Canadian hip hop project, I was interviewing people that had never been interviewed before and had no media press at all. So I was finding like an obscure cat from Saskatoon that was on like a B side of a record. Uh, and he, I, I was told that he was involved in, in something or he was in, in the room when something else was done. But I'm interviewing this cat for the first time. He's never been interviewed before. There's no questions that I could possibly formulate. I'm just going to have to talk to this guy and figure out what he knows. Right. Um, but he's going to know more than I do, so I'm going to allow him to direct the conversation. And that process, because I've interviewed about 650 people for the Canadian Hip Hop book. Um, yeah. He's serious, bro. I'm trying to tell you, man. He ain't here for no just because. <laughs> this is a serious dude. Alex, can, can you? Uh, I tried yeah, to Google yeah, real it, quick. Go for it. Go for it. Can you? Can you? Yeah. I tried to Google real quick. Can you tell us why homeboy 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 Sandman said that? I'm not familiar with that. Why he said that? <laughs> I, no, it, it it was so long ago. But all I can tell you is that he he came with like good faith. He had um um he had like intentionality, and he was trying to discuss an, a a point. Um and yeah, it was fairly eloquently done. Uh, don't uh, okay anyone that's watching this don't have like ill feelings towards homeboy sandman uh, i don't it was just yeah, yeah. oh boy sandman is another sandman. one of those a good guy he yeah, held his yeah, yeah, during yeah. The, those scarcity times yeah homeboy yeah. sandman's yeah. name carpenter. is good in the streets yeah, yeah. new carpenter yeah, yeah, yeah i tried to google sure. but something stupid popped up and music started playing i was like man let me get the fuck off this shit because I, I i was really fair yeah. Enough, fair enough, yeah um it was a long time ago back. it was like 10 years ago do do you have that uh interview um it's on my YouTube channel, and everything but the last question is on there. So go ahead. Oh. Nice. <laughs> no, I just I didn't include it. It was it ruined the vibe of the interview. There was no sense. I ha- I personally have the interview. I have all the interviews I've done. But uh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, interesting, man. Yeah, but homeboy Sandman's good in my book. He's been good in my book, and I just have to deep dive and uh, 
try to find that right there. Because I, I know if he said something like that, it's probably like a double untouch. There was a reason. Or, uh, Absolutely. Yeah, there's something behind it. Yeah, making a like point. That. Yeah. Because, yeah, I'm sure. black. Now, I was up front at his show, motherfuckers. Word. Yeah. I'm black, y'all. I'm black, y'all. I'm black, y'all. Yeah. And I'm black, and I'm black, and I'm black, and I'm black. True, indeed. True, indeed. It is Black History Month. The second day. It is. It is. It is. It's Black History Month. Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts are playing in the Super Bowl. They in the Super Bowl. black quarterback will win. True, indeed. But Pat Mahomes sounds like every cop that pulled me over in Georgia. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and his That's girlfriend funny. is extremely oh. annoying. Yeah, where? Any? Hey yo, hey yo, special special shout out and fuck you to those Memphis cops who uh pulled over my man Tyree and uh special took his shit. life on some mm-hmm. on some bullshit because he was fucking one of the cops' uh ex girlfriends. They got on some gang action and decided to take his life. And it, it, this ain't a civil rights issue. This is a sucker issue. Y'all some suckers. I hope y'all die in jail. Congratulations. Y'all some hoe ass I hope they get fucked first. I have a co-worker. His name is RV. Yeah. And it's, they, they say oh, it's, not uh, RV stands again. for... Are we talking about yeah, real violence real again? Violent. But my homie oh, in there, damn. he said he stands for rape, rape violently. Rape victim. He's a rape victim. <laughs> rape victim. That's, I'm like, that's what RV stands for. This is not funny, for. guys. Don't, don't. This is not funny. You can't but anyway, make jokes I digress, like this man. in 2003. Yeah, you can. Like it, it's it's funny when it's true. Okay. Also, I want to go back and ask these quest this question too. Like, uh, okay, boom. Now, now yeah, sure. I forget the term you said. Ask what? But like, okay, you, songs that gave you chills. Name some of the songs that gave you chills. Prison. Not not like not like new ones. Period. Back Non-new when I mean, like, you ninety nine. Okay. You say you got the hip hop. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so ninety nine. You got the hip hop. I thought you were gonna say yeah. I thought you were gonna say. I thought you, when 99 came around, I thought you were going to talk about uh, Back That Ass Up because Cash Money took over <laughs> for the 99 2000. I'm joking. I'm they joking, did I'm joking. take over yeah, for the 99 yeah, name, 2000. Name songs that gave you chills the first time you heard the, yeah. the chill flag. Black History. Well, Brain Damage was the first song off of uh, Slim Shady LP that I heard that I really mm-hmm. fucked with. Um, so that was, that was 99. Um, mm-hmm. Other, I don't know, I can name like uh, obvious ones like uh, Shook Ones Part 2 and shit really ended up mm, changed, yes, the, still, changed a lot for me. Um, Trouble Man by the Juggernauts. That shit's mm. so ill. Uh, it comes in with that John Coltrane sample, that dun 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 from uh, mm-hmm. my favorite things. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. oh man, mm-hmm. that there's something about that. I Just love, the way I it love, starts yeah. in the yeah, yeah. Um, fucking ah oh, man. Oh, I wrote a book about uh, um, uh, from my upstairs neighbor for L, uh, by LP off of his Cancer for Cure album. Um, so Ooh. that song meant a lot to me. Um, da-da-da. LP is amazing. I don't know. I'm in, I'm into a lot of obscure kind of random rap shit. Um, so obviously the Canadian stuff. I'm into like prairie rap music that has like a I don't know the, the label now is Saskatoon folk rap and it's kind of an ode to the sound of Saskatoon rap music. Um, but I love that shit. Like old epic music and stuff. Um, big fan. Um, big fan of the kind of west coast indie rap scene so we mentioned like hieroglyphics and stuff earlier but like mystic journeyman and oh you Giselle didn't say Fellowship mystic and, journeyman oh man the mystic and, journeyman god damn and, oh and like uh orco the psychotic alien and Woo! uh the fucking masters orco, of the universe yeah. shit that was going on yeah, in san diego deep. Um, that shit is really really ill um i i was typically an east coast cast so whenever the uh, when I was doing the channel originally, I was like almost exclusively listening to New York stuff. It was like nonfiction, um, artifacts that we mentioned, mm-hmm. um, any like grimy, like DITC, um, yeah. uh, what Nick Wiz was doing and Cella Dwellers and all those, uh, Ooh, like Cella, Cella Sounds compilations. Um, yeah. that shit was like. That was my bucket of tea that I really fucked with. It was those other, I everything else was and like an exploration at some point. Uh, Devin the Dude was one that eventually I took that, uh, Absolutely. I took rap a lot, the rap a lot plunge and, and started going through the the odd squad. See, I'm just a man who tried shit. to do all that. I can't <laughs> come on, man. Hey, Dude. look, so Devin the Dude is yeah, a Devin, legend, man. Shout out, yeah, Devin, Devin the Dude, Dude is. Probably one of my favorites. Yeah. If I if I had to Damn, talk about Alex. my favorite rappers, um, my favorite rappers, which is probably an easier question that would hint at what I listen to, um, mm-hmm. 
is I would say Devin the Dudes would be in that conversation somewhere. I would say Slick Rick, uh, certainly. <laughs> I'd probably put Last Emperor somewhere in there. Ooh. Um Viro the Virus, which was an indie cat from from New Jersey. He was really ill. Um, if you haven't checked out Viro the Virus, like definitely do so. He's still around. Um, no, he passed away in like 2015, I want to say. Yeah, wow. passed away. Um, exhibit. I would put exhibit. I fucking oh, loved wow. exhibits, like voice Ooh. and style back in the day. Um, what you see is what you get is a classic video. It's one of the yeah. epicest videos mm-hmm. that came out. Yeah, paparazzi. Oh, where you go? Yeah. yeah, paparazzi. Oh, man, the paparazzi. Yeah, uh, Speed of Life is a is a good album. Oh, Mast Ace would certainly be in there, and then a bunch oh, of come new on. cats. So oh, shit. yeah, um, absolutely. Slaughterhouse. A bunch of new cats, like the real Slaughterhouse uh, album. He had the real Slaughterhouse. Yeah, fucking um, right. Out of the new cats, like Ito, Stove God Cooks, um, fucking Mooch. Mooch is up there for me uh, from the cloth. Um, it's the cloth, nigga. Yo, yo. He just put out yeah, that new yo, uh, top top shelf Green freestyle. Light. That's crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. He just put out a new album, Green Light, January thirty first, sure. two days ago. Uh, yeah. Did, okay, did you get the Stove God's Cook leak? I did. Yeah, yeah it's actually yeah, it's in my, the uh, my favorite, in the, my favorite like project it. the last month. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, yeah, I like so, how you so put good, in brackets so leaked. Yeah, it might not be when you listed it in the publication. I think it's important. It's not a. It's not an official release, and it's not something that he has condoned to be out in the public. So you can't. Yeah, yeah, uh, but you have but, to make that yeah. knowledgeable for people. It's not. That's it, not. That's fair. Yeah. We could. We could very much get a proper. If these kitchen walls could talk in like two months' time, I when think the we clock have to recognize that this down. is leak, right? When, when is the clock that's stop? counting Go- down? Google right that now. shit. I'm googling right it now. Stops, it's right for now. Tuesday. It stops in like one day. Yeah, it stops tomorrow or something. Actually, tomorrow the clock stops. I'm pretty uh, sure. It's, I, I thought mean, it was, I know. That it was, by the time this episode drops, because yeah, it was recorded for years because that was the million dollar album that was on his website, and it had the that was artwork. the million dollar album. I wouldn't yeah, have paid a million dollars for that. Walls, I, I said it was. Bad. I don't think that. it was though. It's the same Guys, album title. Cooks. No, yeah, we had it no is? idea because we it was obviously a hack, and the right. person that uploaded it uploaded it with that title now i have no idea if that's the actual music but it well, is no, the it same had title album cover too. of the album it, and it's it's new it's stove god. god it's new it's stove, stove god, god for sure it's new art huh. and yeah of course it's new stove god yeah huh interesting interesting it's a bit because there's some reused verses there's a couple like reused lines and stuff oh i haven't gotten god. to that I part yet. yeah but but yeah. one thing i have noticed and me and lukey were talking about this before Stove God is the king of biting Jay Z verses. All he well, does everybody is, verses. but not only yeah, everybody, but specifically after I've listened even more, like every verse of his has a Jay Z <laughs> line or two in it. The one of the lines that he reused off this album was that whole uh, "I used to or I want to rhyme like common sense, but I sold my way up yeah, to the brick on that, Black that Butter, the best song on the album." Thing. Mm. Yeah, yeah the first that's, song. A, that's a reused verse. That's uh yeah. He, that's why this that might not be a real album. God, yeah. Yeah. Also, fellas, the clock four hour today is Thursday, the second. Um four hours. The clock is going wow. off in four hours and thirty two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, what Stone Guy's gonna do, he's gonna announce he's gonna release the album. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's gonna <laughs> announce. Guess, <laughs> what, guys? Yeah. guess what? Guess what? I have another million dollar <laughs> album coming out. <laughs> Uh, Yo, dude, it's I, go I fucking crazy. love the Stove God project. Stove God's one of those yeah. names that um, I don't know. It's there's something so captivating about the way that he rhymes. It's like it's yeah, within it's this funny. new wave, and it fits so well within this new wave. It's like it's clearly a part of the renaissance that we're in, but at the same time, it's like the most unique delivery out of any of these cats like but it, he's funny it is just talking to you and he's hilarious but like, but i think fun. uh, i can't answer the phone right now bitch i'm cooking dope like that shit's <laughs> fun man. Like, but i i think I part of it is his <laughs> his his natural style like yeah because you know he's yeah. unique in the way he rhymes he's unique in the way he writes but he's also unique in it's the like way he, he throws hooks yeah. together and yeah. and you know, yeah, he's so just good. there. There are people that'll walk in a room 
and and just everything that they say, everything that they do just has a certain exactly. yes. flair, a panache yeah. to it. And and that yeah. to me is Stove God. Stove God can yeah, say the same lines as somebody yeah. else, but they're just going to sound different coming from him. I wrote Ooh. about this in an article and I don't know who I was talking about, but maybe I was just talking about like modern rappers in general. But uh, there's this idea when you watch like The Godfather or something that's uh, or like a scene or movie. something like a, a really good like scripted like gangster flick from like Scorsese or something. Mm -hmm. um, these like an Al Pacino character will say the thing like every line that he says is like menacing and and cold and perfectly crafted and everything is like a veiled threat because mm -hmm. even if it sounds super fucking grimy and and like and nasty you know under you know with your heart that he yeah. really means 10 you're times wasting my that. motherfucking um, time and good rap music like ito for instance is another one that's like just yeah they're capable uh, they're that character and you're able to listen to that character, that idea in in the form of rap music, and uh, that's cool as shit. Because I love those movies, and when I listen to someone like Edo, it, it that's the experience I get. It's mm -hmm. it's uh, yeah, fucking five stars, man. It's, that shit's ill. Mm. I like yeah. funny rappers like Action Bronson when he came out. He yeah. was hilarious yeah, to me. To, yeah. uh, I love Doctor Lecter when it first came out. Yes, Dr. Lecter, but, like I, I reviewed it early. I was so I was super stoked and, and then it came out digitally only. Um and I was pretty bummed because at that time I was buying everything. Um mm -hmm. and um then Chopped Herring announced it on vinyl. And uh, I was like, ah oh, Chopped Herring's a European label, so it costs a lot to ship over. And I was like, ah, oh, it's vinyl, I'll, I'll wait for the CD. And then it never got released on CD, and now the Chopped Herring vinyl. Uh and I bought vinyl from Chopped Herring before, but the Chopped Herring vinyl is now like three thousand dollars for fucking Action Bronson. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Uh, uh, yeah. I don't think they pressed up rare chandeliers as well. That's what put it over the they top. They did, yeah. The instrumentals, the I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah, they definitely did. I feel they like did. I saw it. Damn, I feel I, like I, I saw it. Doing that shit. Chop Herring <laughs> um, did rare chandeliers. I think I think they put out the instrumentals. I'm not sure if they put out the actual uh, yeah. vocal. Oh, maybe it was just the instrumental albums. album. But yeah, um, I definitely I, like that album. I think why still Stove Guys is put over the top is because he's it's simplified um it's easier to follow because i think the funniest rapper to me well just my opinion because of what i am or who i am is carl already knows this doom i think doom is hilarious hilarious like, yeah a rapper's rapper like he rap raps a lot of times on those earlier yeah. tracks uh action bronson was funny rapping rap rapping stove god has the slower more methodical about it and whenever he did that um oh puff daddy Puff Daddy is when he came to his own and uh <laughs> and Eric Cooks was gone, bro. Uh Stove Guys, he really showed out on that Puff Daddy song on the uh what album was that a Primo Jab? Marcio Lago? On Rock Marciotto? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, was Marcio yeah. Lago, yeah. Yeah, Marcio Lago was talking about, yeah. But yeah, I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Marcio Lago. Yeah, yeah. The, but he really showed out that song. Yeah. We had a 12 body Can't summer. stop, won't yeah. stop. Won't that stop. One. Yeah, uh, Puff Daddy with the pot can't stop, won't stop. That song is awesome. Yeah, but Stove Guys really came into his own, and he was rapping slower. And he surrounded he was, himself yeah. with the yeah. He, he surrounded himself with a good cast of characters that like fit his yes. like vibe too. Like I think the Rock Marciano. Like I understand the the comments that are made recently, but like Rock Marciano was a really good pick for for Stove God in terms of like giving him that stamp of legitimacy. Like Rock Marciano mm -hmm. right now has. A certain like exalted status within the culture. Yes, People 100%. really revere this man, yeah, and that's one of the why having that up. stamp is just uh, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it then does. the West Side Gun thing is is fantastic as well. Um, that's what and that's well. uh, yeah ushered into a whole new audience. True and clearly, True he's like his favorite artist right now, like West the West Side Gun's favorite artist because he's featured more than him, anyone yes. else yes. out of all True the indeed. like out of Rome streets and. SD right Mac now, and, and all that shit. It's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. clearly fucks with That's Stove God more than anyone. Wes, I and think Buster Rhymes. Think that is, for that. yeah, yeah. Shout out, shout out the Godfather Buster Rhymes. But yeah, yeah, I feel like I feel like West Side Gun and Stove God joining forces. The the and Griselda, Rome like they what they call yeah, and Rome Streets. That's what I was just about to say, Luki. The whole Griselda 2.0 that they're calling it. 
it's really been a breath of fresh Griselda air. It's been, yeah, that's well, that's what they that's what they call themselves, Griselda 2.0. I, don't uh, know. I think it's been a yeah, it's been a breath of fresh air. Stone God is definitely he's the he's the Max B <laughs> of of the abyss right now. Yep. And hey, shout out Max B. Max B coming home soon. Can't wait till Big Avail is on these streets because we're gonna oh, really man. see what happens. I'm looking at the clock real quick again. Uh I just went to the clock again for uh, Stove Guys to see if it maybe reset or something. <laughs> nope, still four hours. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a reset still, sitting there on it's refresh. It's still four yeah. hours, four hours and 26 minutes. Then we're going to see uh, what actually happens here. Yeah, happen, happen. Carl Primo, do we have anything else? I, man, I, I just. We have, I, some, we, have a, we have a lot more stuff, but like still is like, yeah, you, you, hour 30 minute show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, I, I just, I, I really, really respect what you've chosen to do for your life and, and, the fact that you're you're doing something that you're passionate that. about, and mm-hmm. and that you're supported in doing that, but you're bringing <laughs> all of this knowledge out to people is amazing. So, you know, just a huge salute to you. And and yeah, if we can hook it up and get you on here as a regular kind of piece, that would anytime. be that would be so dope to do. Yeah, anytime. And if you want to talk about like just rap releases, I'm I'm always down. Like I. I'm one of the few people that you can almost always call on and I will have heard whatever album you're wanting to talk about, at least for you guys. Like, uh, I can't do that with anyone else because as you say, people will walk up to you and be like, oh, if you listen to this new like JID record or something, and it's like, it's just their, their spheres, their atmospheres are, their bubbles are different than mine, but you guys have the same bubbles. So in the bubble. Yeah, definitely. Primo jab. No, I mean, I think Carl just said it. Uh, no, I have a question what, for you guys. Go ahead, Alex. What, what, are, what are some of your favorite projects for January? Huh, for January? Thanks for asking, Alex. Yeah. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what some of my favorite projects are. Well, again, we already said it, that um, definitely that Ito, Ito and, yeah. uh, and, and Future, Future Wave. Wave. Yeah. Uh, that stars Coleman Amazing. and God Bless. Uh, the fair. Fire. Don't. Oh, my God. It's so crazy. Yep. I'm very excited in how how raw that is. It's been in rotation all the time. And like I said, that organized crime, that's that's what I'm playing. Those are my top three projects right now that I'm into. That Indiana Jones that came out with Boldy, I wanted so much more for it, and it was only okay. Uh, you didn't like the trap beats? Oroku Saki, Mickey Diamond, yeah. and Raul Duke. Yeah, yeah, the, the Roku Saki and Raul Duke is definitely dope. But yeah, that the Indiana yeah. Jones was only okay. I, I mean, okay. I, I think I loved it. You know, speaking of, since we're still in Canada, that that Nicholas Craven Boldy was oh. top notch, right? And then you had that Future Wave in Boldy, top notch. Yeah. And I feel like the Indiana Jones. It was okay. I mean, Boldy's rhymes were definitely dope. I feel like Boldy. Fan base. It is it, Freddie yeah. Freddie Gibbs fan base. Yes. I think Thank I you, like Lukey. this album yes, more Lukey. than I like. Yeah, that's a good that's good a really point, good point, Lukey. Thank you, Lukey. Uh, the I think I like this album more than I like the Nicholas Craven joint, which is really it seems blasphemous. But uh the Nicholas yeah, Craven I, really, I, I am not I am not a, like a, a trap rap fan really at all. Um, yeah. and I was super late to even being able to appreciate any of that music. Like at sure a certain dude. point, I was like really Gucci. closed off to other music. Like if it wasn't underground rap music, I was I was just like not fucking with it. Gucci like, it and Future rap, rap music. Gucci yeah, and nothing. Future, man. Like, I'm in Atlanta, man. I, Gucci and Future. I, <laughs> I've lightened up to to the these sounds a lot, but for some reason, um, and I know that Boldy James has worked with a lot of that type of sound earlier in his career, but having him uh-huh. return to that, it just it worked. I don't know. It, it really worked for me, um, and. I, I listened to a lot of Boldy over the last year. My favorite yeah, album from Boldy James last year was the uh, Real Bad Man Project. Because uh, that yeah. was just like hard beats. It was. It was super dope. It was heavy. Um, whereas like the Future Wave joint was like this atmospheric. Like the Future Wave has really been on this like weird, like every album has to be like this weird adventure with like, like twists and every album He's though. soundscaping uh, though. Yeah. 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 He yeah he's, he's creating. Yeah. They flow together. Uh, they they flow. They. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. Look, my yeah. hand, hand work is going so quick. He's, this is future but he's wave taking album. you on a journey. Wave. Yeah. yeah. That, that's yeah. that. Yeah. And right. sometimes it'll go like. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Then it'll come back. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's future yeah. wave right there. 
but it's all yeah. going in unison. It's going yeah. the same way. It's it like goes. A, yeah, he crafts. Yeah, goes. He crafts the yeah. the environment for his whoever he's working yeah. with. Absolutely. True indeed. True indeed. Yeah. Or oh, uh, I'm crafting something. What about, soon. What about uh, everyone else here for for January? All right. So the Ito and and Future Wave project definitely Arukasaki, uh, Mickey Diamond, Mickey Diamond. Raul Duke. Yeah. Um, what do colors taste like? Oh, my man. Salute. Uncle Fester. <laughs> yeah, Uncle Fester and my man Primo Jab. I love that that record. It's great. Yeah. Salute, it's man. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, yo, boom. That Stars Bless shit is, 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 goes hard, man. I like Stars as a personality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's he is so an like, original boom. dude, yeah. man. Absolutely. Absolutely. But really, I've been listening. Um, I don't want to say I've been inspired. I got so much music to do that I haven't done. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, I've been listening to my shit to try to get this shit straight. I'm, uh, I'm trying to do it. When's a, your album coming out? I don't know, man. I got mad shit to come out, but I got mad shit to do too as well. You know what I'm saying? On, I got man. shit get to do busy, with Carl. I say I got, I got, I'm, I got. I'm, I'm listening. Yeah, but check when? it out. Pool, check it out. I got um, <laughs> get, uh, Power Socks for Ghetto Socks. It's all, probably almost done. Should be I'm gonna stop getting being scared of that man and send that shit away. Come on, man. Power Finish Wolf, it. Well, Wolf of Graham, uh, that's done. It's getting put out by I think Funeral Party and uh, Ho uh Holy Mountain Printing, hopefully soon. Then what else I got? I got um the Dr. Manhattan the Dr. Manhattan Power Man project is totally done, featuring uh cannabis. Uh that's just been done with uh Dread Eye. I got shit working on with Carl. I got this project I want to put out called um Collusive Partisans with Primo Jab, Mondo Slade, Imp, um, who else? Uh, Black Seed. There's one more. Per oh, Liam Capital. I'm going to put all that together. I listened to that shit right there. That I was going to try to finish it, then send it to Carl and have him put drums on it <laughs> and then put it out. You know what I'm saying? Then we'll have like a yes. group picture. Then at the back, Carl will be on the, on, the, on the picture by himself with drumsticks or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Word. I like, yeah. But I've been listening to that Looking shit right corny. there because I really, yeah, because I try not to listen to a lot of music while I'm, I'm spitting my own rhymes because I don't want to sound like nobody. Mm, and I, I, I'm real. trying to be, yeah, I try to be real funny. Like the first rhymes of the uh, album, I said, I had to break up with my side chick because she was a squirter. My girl would find <laughs> a wet spot and I didn't want to hurt her. That's real shit. Like, yeah. So, yeah. I, that, yeah. So, Do I you like think if you listen to. A lot of a lot of rappers or a lot of artists in general will say that same argument that they don't want to listen to new music while they're making their own music because it will run on the favorites. opposite. Um, but I feel as though that's only the case if you really obsess over something and you really start like you only start listening. You listen to like Jay Z for a week or something, and then you're going to start sounding like him. But if you listen to like a variety of stuff, if you're always listening to new shit, and you're not really going back and like revisiting old stuff. You probably won't yeah. run into that problem, will you? But 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 I hear some of these guys, their bars, I'm like, damn, I could have said that. Or I could be like, oh, shit, that's just fire. Maybe I can, nah, I ain't going to say, nah, I don't want to say nothing like these motherfuckers, yo. Real shit. Because at the that's end of the day, shit. I'm a competitive motherfucker, and I want to chop their heads off with a sword. You know what I'm saying? Like, boom, like like big uh, big Chris said, it's a gladiator sport. I want to chop their heads off. Now, I'll go listen. Definitely, I'm going to listen. But then I was like, I got to put it down. You know what I'm saying? Because like, you know what I'm saying? It's God bless. I'm going to listen to this shit because it's God bless. You know what I'm saying? Stars Coleman. I'm going to listen to that shit. I'm going to listen to it because I like Boldy. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Brick Mountain, Montana. I love that song like a motherfucker. I can't yeah. rap like those guys. So sometimes I can't rap like them, but they punch lines sometimes and be like, yo, I'll be at it's work inspiring. listening and I'll be yelling, yelling like, oh, like, oh my God, yo, you killed it, dude. Mav, you killed it. Daniel son, you killed it. Yo, oh my God. Then I want to go in the message and be like, yo, you murdered that line right there, motherfucker. Like, oh, yo, I, I send see people. You I, I definitely I've done send that. DMs. I definitely Word. send yeah, yeah. I've done that. I send rappers DMs but instantly then, every time I'm listening. Like, yo, you went mm -hmm. crazy on that. You know, absolutely. But then it makes me question myself because I know I'm kind of different. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I've been different for a long time and now I'm finally rapping in the pocket. Before, I didn't care. It was everywhere. It's called Free Flow Berserko Flow. It, it was uh, determined by my uh, producer, V Sharp. He said, it's free flow, berserko flow. It's everywhere. It's crazy, blah, blah, blah. What these guys call strangegibberish.net, strangegibberish records. Not strange records. But yeah, yeah. I, go, I listen to everybody's shit, especially the ones that I love. I listen to the mooch, but then I don't want to, like, 
I don't want to absorb too much of it. Yeah. yeah. And then I don't want to question myself because I'm really particular sure. and I'm competitive. Whatever you want to do. If we want to, if you right, Alex, right now you said who could pee in a cup more. I'm going to try to pee three <laughs> liters and beat you in that piss test. Yeah. You know All right, Luke. That's how competitive Luke my cage. Cage. <laughs> I'm. I'm 50. I'm not joining in any piss club. I, I piss. Can't, Are you, I'm gonna yeah, be dehydrated like a motherfucker. I might die pissing three liters. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's how. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, yeah but def, definitely, I, I listen to it. Put it down. I listen to it. <laughs> put it down. You know what I'm saying? Listen, listen to it. Put it. Down. I might listen like once or twice just to see what everybody's saying. But then I gotta, I gotta put it away. There's been times where like, oh my god, uh, drive, uh, shit, drive bys. That's why. Uh, uh, drive by is almost hit the wrong guy. That's why I got to do walk ups. Who said that shit? I said, I man, said yo, that. that is. Why did I say that shit? That shit is hot. Word, like real shit. Oh, uh, what's that gun? My nick, my nick, rocking the fear guy sweatsuit. My nigga hit six extra niggas. He can't shoot. I'm like, yo, that's my niggas. Them niggas really can't shoot. They be holding the gun on funny sideways and shit. <laughs> like, I can say something like that, but I'm like, yo, don't do that. Don't say that. You gotta can't say that. Don't even talk about that shit because you don't want to say nothing like these motherfuckers, yo. You want to say your own shit. You're your own person. Right. You're your own man. And some of the people that I love, I'm influenced by. No emotion. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yo, that. Enough about me. Fuck me. Pause. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Man, thank you guys so much for having me on. I I really appreciate it. I do. I do. That, we appreciate you. Your collection yes. is absolutely just man. masterful and beautiful and beautifully organized and everything. My shit is fucked up. Oh, this oh, is not got? organized at all. I wish it was organized, but uh, no. I, I, I just moved here a few months ago, and uh, right. yeah, it's it's a mess. It's a mess. What up, blood? Um, what up, Carl? <laughs> yeah, Canada oh, oh, in the Canada. house, man. Canada in the house. Like no, I said, man, when like, I discovered yeah, all this Canadian music, man, they just they just like us. And I, I did not know for years that Canada is like the second biggest city in um North America. Country? Con- you not, mean, sec- you mean Toronto no, 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 is the I'm second biggest Toronto. city? Toronto. Okay. There you go. My bad. Yeah, smack me. Pause. Ladies, I'm into that. I don't know if sure. Toronto is the second largest. Maybe it is. It's not. New York, I assume, is number one. New York no. City is yes. number one. Mexico City is the largest uh, city in uh, North America. North America. North America. So, boom, what's yeah. second? There's no one? way that Toronto is, is over New York City. There's yeah. no way. Or it's, LA. It's in the top five. <clears throat> it's in the top five, uh, absolutely. Probably. My facts probably, are wrong. Yeah. I, if I need to know something, I just call Carl. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Toronto, Toronto is pretty big, though. It's, it's probably like, it's probably number four. Let's say that. Maybe yeah, number five. Acreage wise, Toronto is very large. Yeah, maybe. Maybe but population absolutely. wise, it's not going to be New York. It's not going to be LA. City, Mexico City, New York, LA, Chicago, Chicago, um, and then maybe Toronto. That sounds like the top five to me. I want to say like I'm joking. Dallas, Fort Worth is going to be up nah, there somewhere. Nah, no, 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 no. Not it's more it's Toronto, some random. It's some random city in Mexico that we don't know about that's bigger than. Than that, no, straight up, like it's no, probably, you're right. Like the top ten is rounded out that way. I feel like we talked about this before. Alex, are you a soccer yeah. fan? I think Toronto must sit somewhere like uh, six, seven, eight million or something yeah. for Toronto. Yeah, it's eight million. It's eight million. It's eight million. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm are, pretty are you, positive, are, man. I, are you I don't, a soccer I don't fan? Watch sports? No, no, no. Okay, okay. I would say that he because the, the World Cup is coming to North, North America. Yeah. North American. What's that epic line? The fuck Bon Jovi. I only like rap. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, we're yeah. Fuck yeah. my job, y'all. Only like yeah. <laughs> or, um, but yeah, the yeah. North American World Cup is here, and I'm really uh, it's four year, three years away now, and um, I'm just trying to see what everybody can do because I know a lot of people are coming from overseas. Here, Dread Eye said he might come over here for the World Cup. That's my man's right there since like '06. Um, the most games in the most soccer oh. shit that I get is the. Uh, is the cousin Feo and uh, Lord Juco oh, project? Oh, uh, yeah. the Derby. Yeah, Death shout out Derby. to cousin Feo, yo. Cousin Feo, that's my he got a new of my soccer knowledge. Yeah, yo, special <laughs> shout out cousin Feo. Dude. He got a new uh, Instagram page. I'm glad that y'all said that. That's a nice segue. He has a new Instagram page. Big Ghost just put me up on it. Um, I will give it to you. Yeah, just just look it up. Go on Big Ghost Story. He'll tell you what his new Instagram page is. Yeah, they got good jerseys too. 
Yeah, but yeah. I, I would like maybe maybe if I can get up there to Canada, we can we can link up. You know what I'm saying? For the definitely for the World Cup. It's far away. We probably see each other before then. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This game's all over North America. We can go to Mexico, back to the United States. Then I go to Canada and kick it with you, <laughs> Sox, Festa, everybody else. We might have a show up there doing the World Cup. Who knows? You know I me. Mean? You never know, man. Like, yeah. So it's like, be an amazing like thing, man. Ugly face yeah, fail. That's what it's called. Ugly face fail. Yeah, I gotta get that, get that, that dude. That's a good dude. I need dude, to follow dude. that. Yeah, yeah. True indeed, true indeed. We yeah, able. Thank you so very much for coming on here, man. You a scholar. Yeah, yeah, you a course. blessing to the culture, my dude. Peace, Absolutely. peace. It's, it's, it, everything is peace with you, my dude. We're, You're doing we, the we, Lord's we, work, man. From the learner. You're doing amazing work, man. That's why I wanted you to be on the show, man. I, I wanted people to know about your efforts and and know that also that you got this magazine coming out. We need indeed. to have parts of it. Everybody should tap in and read it. The seventh of February should be. Should I appreciate be it. Yeah, yeah, it should be. Uh, it should definitely be out by the seventh of February, if not a little bit earlier. Whenever I get the physicals in, I'll uh, I'll release it out to the public, and then I'll probably release them. Well, I am releasing them every month, but I think they'll get closer to the end of the month when it will end up being out uh, for future issues. Good. That's what's up. So uh, yeah. I'll try to have like pre-orders essentially. Hello. Indeed. Man, Look follow this man indeed. if you're not following him, man. Yeah, because and I always, he is yeah, putting out follow, good shit. Follow me on Twitter. I don't, uh, I don't use Instagram at all. So follow me on Twitter, TV Alex. Yeah, the Underground Vault Alex, which is the name of the magazine and the name of the channel from before. Um, and uh, I did a radio show uh, yeah. called the Underground Vault as well. So it's the, uh, it's the lineage of that. I'm just trying to introduce people to underground gems and also do some part in documenting the culture. And uh, and maybe introducing people to to a whole world of conversation about rap music because rap yep. fans love conversation. They love talking about rap music, but uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, there's a lot of uneducated people that talk about rap yep. music, and Absolutely. those conversations are great. But the it it devalues the culture when you think that it's only uneducated people that are talking about it. Um, but if you know that people that are educated are also treating this seriously and not treating it like a joke, then I think it gives you a lot more confidence in what you actually have your passion for. Because uh, mm. we all know when if you're a hip hop person and you have that as a part of your identity and you introduce yourself to people as that, we all know what that feels like. That kind of, uh -huh. there, there's a little bit of hesitancy in introducing you as that because Absolutely. there's a, there's like negative connotations towards that label. I think a lot of that can be erased once you start realizing that no, like some of the smartest minds in the world are actively working on trying to understand what rap music is and they're taking it seriously and there's no negative feelings towards the culture at all. People fucking love this thing at the top. Uh, they do. It's uh, fucking right. Yeah. Yeah, they do, man. And uh, you're going to keep on educating us and we're going to keep on following you about it, my dude. True indeed. That's right. True indeed. True indeed. Thank you. Episode 76. Of the Abyss Podcast cast, issue 76. My bad, Carl. Alex Kuzma. You know what I'm saying? Word. We're going to have you on here again. We're going to have some reels. We're going to have the picks of the week. And mind you, today is the 7th of February. We're in the future. Correct? Yeah. 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 This hey. airs on the 7th. We're in so the future, indeed. man. So then go then, over. Right. Uh, if that's the case, go to, uh, go to alexkuzma.com and uh, you, can, you can pick up a magazine. There so you go. The you hear that? Boom, and we'll post it on our on our YouTube and on our uh, uh, Instagram as well. Tag it yep. up, you know what I'm saying? And go purchase it, man. Thank y'all for hanging out with us today. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Yep. We see y'all next week. Go get the magazine. Know what I mean? See y'all next week. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. That was fantastic.